Good day, steam it. This is going to be the first ever longboard dance lesson on steam it. Pardon my mustache, I didn't take time to wax it or anything. I figured we'd be getting a little bit sweaty today. So, first things first, what is a longboard? Pause the video for a second. A longboard is usually a board that tends to be lower, long, but not always. In fact, it is basically anything that is not your typical park skateboard that is shorter than like, or around 31 inches. This, of course, is a unusually large board known as a dancing board. They also come in shorter sizes and some bigger sizes, but the point being is it is a flat surface usually very little bit of concave, just the slightest little bit so you can feel where you are on the board. And some kicktails so that you can do some cool tricks. Burp, burp. This one has different shaped kicktails on either side, a nose and a tail, so that you can get a slightly different effect from each, uh, each kicktail that you use. So, another part of longboarding is they use reverse kingpin trucks usually, which means it leans and turns to a very large degree when you change your weight on a board, which skateboards with the regular kingpin trucks don't do so much. The effect is that you get a nice carving, curvy turn, which gives it that surfy feel that people enjoy, which just is why I prefer longboarding. Skateboarding's fun too, to each their own. I'm not saying one's better than the other, they each just have differences. So, without further ado, we are gonna put on our helmets. Boop. Magic! So, what we're first going to do is get the footwork down of some basic tricks that's gonna get you started in longboard dancing. So, let's bring it down to foot level here. First thing we're gonna do, we're not going to stand on the longboard. That's a good way to get hurt. So what we're going to do is pretend this line is a skateboard. So, we're cruising along, we're going this direction, and we're thinking, hey, let's do a cool move. What move is that, Daryl? Let's do the cross step. Yeah. So, you're cruising along. And now with longboarding, if you lean on your heels, you're turning left. You know, assuming you're going this way and you're regular. And if you lean on your toes, you're turning this way. So, you step towards the back of the board, bouncing most of your weight on your back foot. Then you start carving with your heel, so now you're turning towards your left. Then you steady yourself on your left foot so that you feel comfortable standing by on one foot on this left foot. So now you're carving to the left and you cross step over to the front foot while mostly balancing on your back leg, well, what is now your back leg. And then steady your foot that now you've play, planted and step back onto the board. At this point, because you've turned left a bunch, you're gonna wanna lean onto your toes, turn to the right, and then step back to the back of the board. Now, I recommend for the first time, especially if you do not have good bounce, to do this on a rug. So first, we're cruising on the board. It's a little squeaky because my, uh, my parts are squeaky. It happens. So, we're leaning, we're turning to the right. We get steady on that back foot. We cross step forward. We get back to normal. Lean on toes, step back. And the effect should be a very flowing movement. 
and not so robotic. But sometimes when you're standing still, it gets a little difficult. Okay, maybe I got a little excited there. Can, 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 can. Or I just like watching my feet on camera. So now, we're gonna take it out on the road. For that, we're gonna need another camera. Hey look, I found another camera. Now you're on another camera. We're probably gonna hang you upside down so you can see my foot movement as I'm riding my board. Don't worry, I'll turn you right back up in the editing. Let's see, that, uh, that seems about right. It's stable on the back leg. Bring your back leg back, or front leg back. Cross over, step forward, return to the back. All right, so now we're just gonna go for a couple loops around the gym. This is what we usually do to practice our moves in, uh, in our longboard lessons here. Soon I'll try to do this live if possible. And of course, I got a lot more turning to the right to do because I'm in a gym and I've got to do circles. Hopefully this audio is not pure crap because all I can do is hear myself echo. Okay, we're gonna do something a little else called S-carving. This will be our next lesson. So you do all the same things, starting on the carpet, all that, blah, 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 because we wanna be safe. But for the sake of keeping the video short and keeping my arm from getting really tired from holding this camera, we're just gonna start with the basic footwork. All right, so here's the line. Think of it as when you step on the opposite, on the side of the line, you're turning to the right, you're turning on the left, standing on the left of the line, you are turning to the left. So, cruising along. You wanna do an S card. So you step, get your foot steady here, and stand off to the side because as you're carving to the right, that momentum allows you to be hovering above the ground on the right side because the momentum keeps you on your board. Use that momentum to cross over and step on the opposite side of the board, but slowly de-weight your balance over so that you can make a steady transition to the next foot and then so forth and repeat. If you repeat that four times, it's called Peter Panning. Let's demonstrate. So I'm just gonna curve around here. See if we can do a Peter Pan in the length of a gym. Whoa, got a little unstable there. So I was paying more attention to the camera than I was my feet. Let's do that one more time. A little slower. Now keep in mind when you start, often it's gonna be very hard for both moves to keep your feet so close together. Often, people wanna go like this and step forward when they are going to do the move. And this is because if you're not getting stable on the foot that you're planning to transfer or to, to put your weight on, then you're basically just using one leg and the other leg might as well be a crutch. So a trick I'm gonna give you, and this will be your homework if you're paying attention to this, is to not do these tricks. Well, you can do the tricks to, to practice them, but I want you to coast on one foot 
with your foot at a slight, slight angle, allowing you to both turn toe side and heel side. Woo, almost hit a wall there. In order to practice the balance of each foot individually. I'm going to do this with the left. My left ankle is my weak angle because I injured it. <clears throat> so I have to be extra careful with it. But all the more reason I should be practicing with it. So, what this will do will strengthen both your ankles so that if you end up in an unusual position out of balance on just one foot, doesn't matter what foot it is, you'll be able to steer the board as well as keep yourself balanced. And that is a very important skill to have in both longboard dancing and downhill or any type of board sport because that will improve your balance and your confidence in every situation. All right, I think it's time to just dance. You can see me cause I lie